Grito, what are you doing? I'm doing 10. 10 packets. 10 packets? That's 20 tablets. I don't even think, I don't even think you're wasting all my antacid. I paid for the antacid. You did? Yes, I for did. For real? Yes. Oh boy, guys. We have unleashed Brito. Are we going to have any left over? Yeah, I saved you three. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. How are you going to, how much water are you going to use? A lot. A lot? <laughs> okay. Stay tuned, guys. Um, I think you need a mortar and a pestle. Well, I don't have one. I have one, but I can't find it. So you're using your daughter's Metal. save the turtle straw? Metal straw. It's working though. Okay. Good job. Two hours later. Science takes time. <laughs> so Kim Jen, here's the deal. One tablet, two tablets, three tablets, ten tablets. We're gonna do this. I thought you said it was twenty tablets. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's 10 bags, 20 tablets. How many antacid tablets can you waste in one day? This isn't wasting, this is science. Okay, this is science, folks. Science is whenever you explore the unknown and find out what happens. Okay, so how much water are you going to put in there? Because um, <laughs> one tablespoon on 50 mils of water isn't going to be enough. I realize that. So what are so, you going to do? My funnel idea was pretty good. Yes, we're very proud of your funnel idea. Okay, I've got 20 tablets. Watch here. I'm just going to get this ready to it's gonna, pull You off. know what it's going to do, folks? You got this on record. It's going to overflow and make a mess. Let me get them. It ain't going to overflow. No, it is going to overflow. Trust me. Why are you being pessimistic on my science? <laughs> okay. You hold the water. Now, you, hold on, you, it's your job to pour in without making a mess. <laughs> okay. And I need probably about 45 mils. Hold on a sec. Okay, um, 45 mils? Just, just pour some. No, I can't estimate 45 mils. What do you think I am? I thought you were a chemistry teacher, I scientist. Am, but about 45 mils? That's good. Okay. This is about 45 mils. You ready? Go. Quickly! <clears throat> if this thing explodes... It is so cold. Feel it. Feel it, camera lady. As Blue Gabe would say, can you smell it? <laughs> Look at the... Um... Uh-oh, what if we didn't get enough water? Yeah. Well, we don't have any more. I was convinced it was going to overflow like this volcano experiment. I don't think we got enough water. Yeah, because it's clumping up. I know. Mine wins. You know what this experiment, chemistry study today has been? It's been a nice a nice relaxing break from the trauma we had with sharks today, spearfishing. Why did you, every time you go now, you have trauma with sharks. In fact, when the boat leaves, I'm like, bye. Well. And then I pray silently, because I don't want to be like. But we got fish for dinner. Sharks. We got mutton snapper, yeah, nice dinner. schoolmaster snapper. But I don't know why you guys become shark attractants. We're not, they just come and find us. Why do you think there are more sharks now? Oh, there's a lot of sharks. Can we cut in like just a gratuitous shark clip into yes, this video? You need to, okay. yes.
There's right. my balloon. Let's measure the diameter. How we been doing? You mean the circumference? Yeah, that's what I meant. Hold. You go. Oh. Hold. Here, I'll hold it. Man, this balloon is so cold. You gotta it's go around freezing. the fattest part. I'm trying. My assistant's not being very assistant. I'm, I'm assisting. Okay. Stretch out the tape measure. Where is the tape measure? Right there. Bingo. 26 inches. 26 inches. That's a lot. You know what, if you listen to this, you know what it makes me think of? Rice and right. crispy treats. Snap, crackle, pop. That is a really cool sound. I wonder if you put it right up the video. Put it against there. Do you think the balloon got so cold that it became inelastic and it broke? I don't know. Like, the balloon, that's the balloon. Oh, you know why? According to this, it's slightly acidic. It produces carbonic acid too, and then the carbonic acid breaks down into carbon dioxide and water. So, very interesting. I'm gonna go check on Brito and make sure his eyes are okay. This is why when you take safe science and you make it extreme, you need to put on safety goggles. I'm gonna go check on him. Hey guys, yesterday we took the circumference of the balloon and we calculated radius and from that we calculated volume in our pink balloon and then you are left with the job of finding the volume in the green balloon and the yellow balloon. So here are the answers you should have gotten. For the green balloon you should have gotten 645 mils and for the yellow balloon 1033 mils. Now notice how these values increase as we expect them to because this the pink balloon only had one tablet the green balloon had two the yellow balloon had three in a perfect world it would have been multiplied by three and multiplied by two it's not a perfect world but still I'm pretty pleased with the data good for us okay so today we're gonna take this volume and we're gonna apply it to the ideal gas law PV equals N R T now, when we take this and we apply it to the ideal gas law, we need to make a few assumptions. First of all, what was the pressure? We're going to measure the pressure in atmospheres, and sadly, I don't have a device to measure the pressure in the balloon. The pressure in the balloon should be, when, once the balloon stops growing, it should be equal to the pressure exerted on it. But the balloon was never really stationary. It was either getting bigger or it was getting smaller. So we're going to assume when it was getting bigger, the pressure was slightly greater than the pressure of the atmosphere. So when we do that, we're going to assume pressure equals 1.1 atmospheres. That's an assumption we're making, and that's a source of, that can be and will be maybe a source of error, but we're going to assume that's our pressure. The volume is the value we calculated yesterday, 
N stands for number of moles we're about to calculate. R for atmospheres is going to be 0 0.0821. And T is the temperature of what it was that day. And it was 77 degrees in our house. And when I convert that to Kelvin, I get T equals 298.15. Okay. So now I have everything I need to plug and chug for the pink balloon into the ideal gas law. So I'm going to plug in 1.1 for my P. I'm going to plug in my value from yesterday, but uh-oh, that's in milliliters, and I need to convert it to liters. So I'm going to divide that by 1,000, so it's going to be 0.382, because the value has to be in liters. N is what I'm solving for, my number of moles. R is 0 0.0821, and T is 298.15. Now, because you're comfortable with Algebra 1, you'll know how to isolate N. Remember, you're going to multiply these values and multiply these values, and then you're going to divide both sides by this term right here so that you can get N by itself. So I'm going to pause for five seconds so you can stop the video and solve for your N for the number of moles in the pink balloon. Okay, if you've done this correctly and we're going to three sig figs, you should get 0 0.0172 moles of CO2. Okay. So that does not tell us how many grams, but if you dredge back your mole chapter into your, into your memory, you can remember how we go from moles to grams. So let's do that together. 0 0.0172 moles of CO2, 1 mole of CO2, if I look on the periodic table, is 44 grams of CO2, and when I do that, I got 0 0.757 grams of CO2. This, folks, is the whole answer we were trying to get to the whole time we were doing the lab. How many grams of CO2 are in the balloon? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through this all the way to completion, and then I'm going to have you calculate the moles and grams in balloon 2 and moles and grams in balloon 3. So let's go back to our calculation. Remember the equation that I showed you? Sodium hydrogen carbonate plus water. And first of all, it makes sodium hydroxide plus carbonic acid. And then the carbonic acid breaks down into H2O plus CO2. So if you look at this, this equation is balanced, and you see all the numbers in front of here, all the coefficients are 1. So that means for every 1 mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate, this is my active ingredient, I'm going to get out 1 mole of CO2 in a perfect world. Okay. So that means if I know the amount of active ingredient of this from my package container, I can predict the grams of this that should form. Now in my calculation, I, I solved that I had 0.757 grams. So let's see how close we actually were to the theoretical value of grams of CO2 that should be formed. Okay. My insert or my package direction said that I had 1.916 grams of H2, sorry, of NaHCO3. Now I need to go from grams of NaHCO3, this is sodium bicarb, to one mole of NaHCO3. And then, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, I can go from one mole of NaHCO3 to one mole of CO2. And then, I can go from one mole of CO2 to 44 grams. Now, a lot of students say, Mrs. Arrington, why would I even bother with this? It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, 
because sometimes it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you get used to using your dimensional analysis logically, then you won't jumble up when things are no longer a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, we just need to plug in some values here. If I add up the molar mass of NaHCO3, I'm gonna get 84 grams. So now what am I gonna say? I'm gonna say 1.916 divided by 84 equals all these ones I can ignore now, times by 44, all right? So you plug in and I'll pause for five seconds. So you can pause the video. And look at what we get, 1.00 grams of CO2. So folks, in a perfect world, we should have gotten 1.00 grams of CO2. What did we get? We got 0.757 grams of CO2. So this is our observed value. This is the true value. So let's calculate our percent error. I'm very pleased with these results. Percent error, observed value. 0.757 minus true value divided by the true value times 100. Remember, this is an absolute value. You don't want a negative percent. So it's going to give you a negative, but because it's an absolute value, you can remove that negative. So I'm going to pause for five seconds while you pause the video and work out this answer. And you should get a 24.3% error. That's really not that bad. Why am I so happy with a 24.3% error? Well, was our balloon really a sphere? Did we know the exact pressure in the balloon? And then there was all the errors of measurement. When we dumped in the tablet, some of the gas escaped before Aubrey could tie it off. So this is a very, very reasonable answer and it's pretty good. So look what you just did. You used the circumference of a balloon to calculate the amount of CO2 produced from putting an Alka-Seltzer tablet in some water. So I want you to congratulate yourselves. And then what I want you to do is I want you to go through and calculate the grams of CO2 in the next two balloons, okay? So let me remind you how you're gonna do that. You're going to go through and you're gonna plug into, you're gonna take this data and this data and you're gonna plug it into PV equals NRT. You're gonna use 1.1 for P. You're gonna use these values for your V, converting them to liters, we'll do that together, 0 0.645 liters and 1.033 liters. So that's your volume. N is what you're solving for. R is your gas constant when you have liters atmospheres. And the temperature in the, in the room stayed the same at 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 298.15 Kelvin. Now you're gonna go ahead and do this calculation for the green balloon and for the yellow balloon. And then you're gonna report back to me and we'll wrap this all up tomorrow.